All right, we are rapid application developments. Lesson seven, part two. What was that? He kept saying multi-form uh, revisited is a two-note Ninja Turtle. Like, you know the... Multi-form Ninja Turtle. Okay, yes. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, <laughs> So some of the some of the we're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple of really cool things also not just multiple we've revisited some of this would be in like way later chapters if you were having a book right um, for example using code snippets in the editor I want to talk about that a little bit because that would have probably saved you guys the time that you needed if when you're building your app okay we're gonna talk about that um, we're also gonna talk about refactoring code a little bit and what the hell that means because some people don't understand what refactoring means at all and they've never seen it. Um, we're going to review how to create a multiform app. I'm just going to give you some steps. I'm not going to actually go back to do lesson six again, right? Um, and um, we're also going to talk about how to move between forms more effectively. I remember we had issues. There was issues. And I told you I would talk about it in, in uh, later lessons. I didn't really want to go over it with you before the exam because if I did, I was concerned. There was a lot of information you had, and it could be, you know, a little information sometimes is a bad thing, right? So, um, and I also wanted to review how to pass data between forms again with this pass the ball method that I talked about, right? What the hell is that, right? And uh, the reason why I call it pass the ball, and it's kind of a Tom thing, right, I'll, I'll be honest with you, is because it's not the only method, definitely, to pass information from one form to the other. We'll talk about different strategies. Um, and we haven't talked about object-oriented programming, which we will in a couple of weeks, right? At that stage, we'll have other options other than just, and especially after we've gone over arrays, which we're going to probably go over next week if I'm not wrong. I think it's next week. Um, and, uh, and so on. So, and as we go through these things, you'll see that there's other options, right, than just um, how we do stuff uh, with passing the ball, this passing the ball method that I'm talking about. All right. So let's talk about code snippets and samples. Code snippets and samples, what the hell are those? Well, um, we won't talk about the samples part of it too, too much, but we'll talk about the code snippets. So really what C Sharp has in your Visual Studio environment is it provides you a bunch of different code snippets. And we didn't want to kind of talk about this too much until we covered the, some of the basics of how to create forms and all that stuff because, it, you know, it kind of makes you see, uh, feel that, you know, you don't, you, you don't need to know how to code and just uh, throw things down. Although, to be honest with you, IntelliSense is kind of like that too. Right, kind of gives you almost like a code snippet, or you know, your, it writes your code for you in some ways. But this is something different. We'll look and see what it looks like. So what it does is you got this. If you right click anywhere on the on, on in your editor, so let's say here we'll create a new uh, application here today. Um, let's, we'll just close the solution down. So I'm going to go a new project, and let's just call this um, <clears throat> you know test project one, because that's I feel like calling that. Test Project 1. Uh, here we go. And Test Project 1, this little uh, useless project that I've got going on right now, right? it's got a form, and, um, and that's all it's got, it's the main form. I'm going to rename this thing, and this is what I recommend to you as well. Um, I'm going to rename it uh, later on, but for now, I'm going to leave it the way it is. So let's say, for example, I go into the code view, and if I right-click or press F7 in Windows, Right, uh, it'll take me here to the actual code view, and I want to start typing some some information. Let's say, for example, I want to, um, you know, start typing um, a for loop or something like right here, in, in you know, in, the, in uh, on, at class level, I probably can do it. But then at the end of the day, if I right click, and if I say um, insert snippet, okay, it's going to give me an option. Uh, Especially on, on the Windows machines, let me try that. You can also press Control uh, Control X, uh, Control K. Sorry, let me try that again. Control K and an X. It'll pull up uh, um, the code snippet. I have to choose Visual C Sharp, and from there you see that there's a bunch of different options. For example, if I want to add in uh, some code, right, that's been written for by by the kind people at Microsoft, right? So let's say I want to do a for loop right here. I don't know why, but let's say I wanted to. I would just double click on this, and it would give me kind of the, the code block, an empty code block of what a for loop would look like. Now, obviously, a for loop is wrong here in your top of the class. We'll go over this again in a second. 
But if I start typing the, the variable name instead of I, if I want to call it uh, my index, if you notice, and then if I press uh, tab, um, it changes my index for all the variables, right? So it actually adds them in and, and, and modifies the for loop for me as I go. Now, you can do this for a number of different kinds of, of uh, basically these uh, uh, code stubs, if you will, that are empty and, and don't do anything until you actually write the, some of the code in there. But I think from a time-saving time perspective, it can really, um, really, really help you save time, especially when you have a time crunch. Right? And especially if you don't remember the format, because you know what? We're shifting as programmers. We constantly shift from one language to another. Tomorrow we're doing PHP. The next day we're going to do Objective-C. The third day we're doing something else, depending on where you're working. Right? Um, so you don't know sometimes the, the, um, the type of syntax you require for the type of language, because you know, you're shifting between things. Or the ID may require certain things that other IDs don't. And you can, a lot of these new IDs, um, whether it's here in Visual Studio or in uh, Eclipse or even in NetBeans or anything else you're used to, they have a lot of these quote unquote code snippets you can use. Um, and I would, I would recommend that you would investigate that kind of stuff uh, for, I believe for um, the Eclipse based stuff, it's uh, control and space that'll bring up a bunch of code snippets if you start typing you know, the first couple characters uh, of, of the, the type of code you want. So that's what code snippets are kind of in a nutshell. They allow you to kind of quickly install stuff that's built into um, to Visual Studio. Um, as well, you could also add in code samples, uh, but we're not going to go there right now because basically you go online and you can download some samples of uh, pre-made projects that you can look at from a learning perspective to kind of incorporate into your own code. Let me go back to the presentation here. So again, so it looks just like this. You insert your snippet. And again, the other option is instead of right-clicking and, um, and, and kind of clicking on uh, the snippet, you can also uh, use the Control K and then X. So Control K and X, and that will actually, that'll actually um, uh, install, you know, kind of uh, paste in this code snippet. And if I go to the next one, you'll see what it looks like again. And here's some examples. Uh, here's a for loop that it kind of puts in, right? Here's what a for each loop. We're going to talk about that over the next uh, uh, day or so. Uh, maybe not this week, but next week. I have, I have to remember that. And if you notice where it says var, that means variable. It doesn't mean it's like you have to declare it as a var, right? Uh, so it's whatever the variable type is. The data type is really what that is. For example, if it was an int, uh, if you're doing a for each loop, int, and then an item in a collection, right? So that's why it looks the way it does. But these things are almost like these little snippets of code that you don't have to remember. Uh, if you want to do a sw uh, like a switch uh, statement, again, very, very useful. You don't remember how to do that. It does a lot of these things for you so you remember. It's code snippets. And here's another one on refactoring code. So refactoring, I mean, really, it's the process of revising and restructuring your existing code, right? And Visual Studio provides a bunch of features to make it easy for you to do that. Um, it helps you improve your code readability um, because you can refactor the, you can rename uh, variables. If, for example, if you rename a variable uh, index and you want to make it uh, index integer, as an example, and it's all through your code and you go, oh my God, it's going to be a you know, big job to do manually, especially if you have a bigger program, you can use refactoring and it'll go through your, uh, your class to do it all for you. Now, again, many programs have the same exact stuff. I just wanted to point out that it does exist in Visual Studio. So this may not be new, and hopefully it's not new to you, right? Um, it also reduces complexity, right? So for example, if I have a lot of code that I've, uh, and you see that there's going to be uh, areas, sometimes you write some code, and it looks very similar to other areas. And if you, th you think about it, you, you can probably pull out or extract a method and then use some, some parameters instead of rewriting that same code over and over again, right? So this is where we can reduce duplication, and, and, and uh, Visual Studio with C Sharp will help you do that. And also, if you want to express, you know, this internal architecture or, or stick with an object model like object-oriented programming, sometimes it makes it easier if you, have to, if you refactor your code. After you write your code in kind of a brute force way, you look at it and you go, oh, God, that's ugly, right? And then you go, okay, let me clean that up, right? And then you use refactoring to do that, right? So that's, that's what I recommend. And by the way, there's also some tools you can download uh, to refactor, help you refactor. There's some really advanced stuff out there um, that helps you do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but Visual Studio has a, a lot of that stuff built in now. Uh, in earlier versions, it did not. So 
So how do we refactor again? Uh, you, if you're going to re, uh, rename or refactor a variable, you would right-click on the variable and then select refactor, and then select rename, and then the rename dialog box would come up, and then it would rename the variable all through your code, which is all good, right? And that's the proper way to do it, to avoid errors, and finger errors is the biggest one, like actually like typing errors, right? You're, re you're redoing your, your, uh, your variable name, and again, uh, Visual Studio will underline it if it, they don't know, if it doesn't know what it is, but you may miss it. Right? And by the way, I do that frequently. I make, I make finger ty you know, typing errors, right? So this will help you do that. It'll help you reduce some of that problem. And it'll give you a little preview of what, hey, review what, your, what this new code is going to look like after you've renamed everything. It looks like this. Are you okay with it, yes or no? Right? And we'll do that in a second. We'll give you an example of that. And um, um, we can also extract the method. Again, what you do is you, you, you kind of highlight the lines that you want to extract in your code, and then you right-click, and then it'll pull up this dialog box that says, hey, name your method. So let's say my method will be called new method, as an example, whatever the method is. It'll take those lines of code, it'll pull them out, put them in the new method, create the code block for you and everything else, and the call to that method right, for, uh, for, like right away. So you don't have to do any of that work yourself. So it saves you several steps and some time, right, which is what I want to show you how to do. All right, we're going to do this in a second, but let's talk about creating multi-form applications, right? So here's some steps for you. I'm not going to go over everything, but here's some steps that I want you to follow. A, or one, create your base project, which means you start off with your basic form or whatever. Rename your initial form so that it's contextual. Let's do that now. So, you know, form one makes no sense to me, right? So I think I would, I would call this thing, uh, if I was going to do it again, and again, you can use renaming here, down here. I would do it there. Call this main form, right, or whatever else makes sense. And if you, if you notice, when you do any kind of refactoring this way, Visual Studio says, hey, are you sure? Because I'm going to make, I'm going to change all the references to this form one in your code. And I say, yes, do it, right? Um, also, you know, a good practice, which I didn't put in there, is kind of change the text of the form to reflect what it is, right? So main form and the title, if you have a title bar, um, it should say what the form is, right? I also, I didn't put it in there, but I would recommend, again, for most forms that you create for more um, applications, make sure it's somewhere in the center of the screen. Like Microsoft has it come, come, up, come up on the left, kind of ugly and, and unnecessary. Um, and that's just the default, right? I didn't talk about accept buttons and uh, cancel buttons. That's extra if you have buttons in your form. But that's the first thing you do. You create your base form. And what I recommend is you put all the buttons that you need. So let's do this together, guys, as an exercise. We're going to build our multi-form application, you know, so that way we're, we're not caught up here. Okay? Because I know this is a, a sticking point for some of you, right? So some of you are going to have this issue. You're going to go, oh, gosh. Because, again, there's going to be another exam. And you're going to say, how do we do that again? I forgot. Right? Or what did he say? Should I do it this way or that way? So here's a good, you know, uh, I would say a good um, presentation and a good opportunity for you guys to look at this thing and say, oh, yeah, let's take a look at multi-forms revisited because this is all the information that I need. Okay. So first thing I need is some kind of uh, button. So I'm going to put in a button, and I'm usually going to put it on the right-hand side here just to indicate it's going to go to the right. I'm going to rename this button properly, contextually. I'm going to call it next button. Here it is. I'm also going to rename or change the text field of the button so it says next. So it looks like a real button. There we go. Next, right? Um, at this point, there's a couple things I can do. Um, what I'd like to do, and for my example, I want to kind of have the form asking my age. What's my age, right? Or whatever. Now, there's different ways I can do it. I can, you can ask any information you want. I'm going to ask just to keep along with my example. And by the way, with your uh, form online, uh, the stuff I've given you already on, on Blackboard, you have this example. But we're going to build it by hand. So I'm going to put a label kind of in the middle of my form somewhere. And I'm going to call this label, uh, well, I'm going to actually put some text in there saying, uh, enter your age. Right, there's enter your age. I'm going to change this to the label name so I know what it is to, like, I don't know, age label, just so I know what it is. Right, here's my age label. And I'm also going to drag in a text box, because that's like an input box, right? Here we go. I'm going to resize it here. Here's my input box, right? And I'm going to change the <coughs> name of my input box, my text box, to age text box, right? That's more contextual, age text box. Right, there it is. 
I'm also going to um, do a couple things. I'm going to highlight both the label and my text box. And I'm going to change my font from Microsoft Sans 8.25 to I want to make it at least 10. Okay. And I, you know, and I can choose another font here. Um, you know, you can choose whatever you like. I'm going to choose my this ugly uh, um, Calibri font that comes with Microsoft. So Calibri, and it's going to be 10 point. It, it defaults to 9.75 if you notice, right? I'm going to pull this label so it's a little closer. It's in the middle of my of my uh, my form here, right? So right now, I mean, I have a label. I'm, I've got some stuff. I'm going to. I want to enter my age, and I want to pass it along to the next form, right? So there's a couple options here. What do you recommend? Should I program my form now from the main form, or should I create all my forms first and then do all my coding? What do, I, what do you recommend? Wait, wait, wait. I want to hear from some guys in the back, because the guys in the back are too darn quiet. Fracking guys in the back, right? <laughs> i got to use a Cylon speak. All right. One at a time. How about the guy in red, the red shirt, right? They always get killed in Star Trek, right? Go ahead. Red shirt, tell me. Uh, I can tell you what I think. I know exactly what I think, but I want you to tell me. You don't want to tell me? One at a time? Okay. Um, so you're programming one at a time. I, again, there's, both strategies are okay. The challenge is when you build one at a time, I find myself going back a lot, right? So I start off with, you know, the first one, I program some stuff, I go to the next one, I put some controls on, I go to the next one, then I, I figure, oh, darn, I've, I got to add these things in here too, right? So none of it's wrong. Um, I'll tell you that, that the, the challenge is I would recommend to you put all your controls on your forms first. That's what I would recommend. Throw all the, the, the GUI down, right, as a plan, right? And this is not just for this, but for also when you do your own coding and your own application. Design your GUI all first as much as you can, and then go back and then um, script your, your code after. And the reason why I say that is because you need your, your GUI there to reference the items on the form, right? Okay, so that's, that's what I, my, my recommendation to you, right? Um, if you don't have your, your GUI down, then a lot of the stuff that you're referencing doesn't exist. Right? So you can't create your code. Right? So let's create the rest of our GUI. So we've got main form. I'm going to add my other forms. There's a bunch of ways I can do this. Uh, again, I, I'm going to add, I'm going to go to project, add Windows form. Okay? You can add, you can do this in, uh, in different ways. You can also go add new item. Right? You can also add, add existing item. Right? There's different options here. We talked about this before in previous lessons. Let's just go down to add Windows form. Okay? So add Windows form. I'm going to, I'm going to create this Windows form here. And here I have an option to actually change the form. I'm going, to, I'm going to name this just next form, so we know it's the next form in, the, in, the, in a row, right? You can name it whatever you like, for your, contextually, again, for your application. Um, I'm going to drop in a button. Now, but look, I have a button already here kind of named for me. Is there anything wrong with me pulling this button into my next form? I've already styled it. I've already named it. I've already put the next button into it. Is there anything bad by doing it? No. Nothing's wrong. So I can highlight this on my first form. Here's my button, right? I'm going to put uh, Control-C for copy. Go to my next form, Control-V, and I paste it. And if I want it to, to be in the same spot, I can use these automatic uh, uh, guides or handlers to put it in. So i got my next button already. Now this button, even though it's called next button, right, as an example, is not the same next button as my previous form because they're different uh, classes. Yes. Everything, all your styling. So, if that's true, if it keeps all your styling, like I told you before, you're going to an exam or you, you're, you're programming an application and you have a bunch of set styles, a lot of companies might have these templates that they give you, and they're already pre-styled templates. So you pre-styled everything, the like controls, the way they should look, and blah, 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 the way they want it for their application, whatever the application is. They take these things, they copy them, or they actually, there's another way of doing it as well. You can create your custom controls like how we have it on the side, uh, our control box. We can have our own custom controls. But let's say worst case, for our knowledge right now, because we haven't, we haven't covered something like that, uh, without using a custom control, um, you can copy and paste, uh, open up another, present, another project with a bunch of different controls that don't really connect or do anything, but they have all the styling you need for your presentation, right? So you don't have to restyle everything again. You don't have to go through everything. It has all the connections that you need to make it work. Okay, so we've done this next button. Not to beleaguer the point here. Drag another button in here because we need this other button. We're going to name back button. Here we go. Here's back button. Right? And again, uh, you can 
name this the way you like. I'm just trying to name it so it's contextual in, uh, in this particular application. And let's go, my text is going to be called back, right, because I want to create a back, a back button here. Um, I'm going to ask also for a couple other pieces of information here. So again, I'm, I'm just doing the UI right now, like I said. So I need a couple of labels. So here's a label, right? And uh, this label here is going to say, uh, enter your uh, first name, right? Here's enter your first name. I'm also going to grab another label here and put it just underneath that, and I'll say enter your last name, right? So I'm going to kind of pass on first name, last name, and age here. That's the um, last name. Okay, enter your last name. A couple text boxes. We're going to rename everything in a second. Here's the first text box. Here's the second text box, right, as an example. Uh, this text box would also obviously be called something like uh, <clears throat> first name text box. Right? This one would be last name text box, keeping with the um, – okay, and these labels here, I have to rename them as well as first name label, pain in the ass, eh? And last name label. I'm being painstaking here. Some people are lazy and they don't do this. And they sometimes, sometimes they say, well, you don't really need it, right? I've heard that too. And by the way, not, by, not just from you guys, but even in business. We don't really need it. Who cares? Well, it's a bunch of labels. They don't really do anything. Who cares, right? And I agree in some cases if you're, if you're, if you're running a speedy app and you don't, wanna, you don't care too much. But if, you have a, if you're in a, a structured environment, they all care. Let's also, uh, you can do two things. Highlight the entire the, the three of them, and then when you highlight them all, they have some common controls that are common to all of them. Like, for example, the font, I can click on here, the ellipses, and pull down the same kind of thing. I type in uh, Calibri instead of trying to find it. Here it is, right? And then I'm going to, again, choose 10 because I think 10 is a little bit better. Here it is. I also want to move this around. Maybe it's in the middle of my form somewhere approximately. There it is. So I've got my entry controls there too, okay? So UI done. This next form, I really should rename the... Uh, text here, so it's say next, and I really should change my start position to center because that's something that I want. Okay, very good. I like this. By the way, um, again, later on as we go in the course, we'll do some visual inheritance, visual inheritance, which you can actually create your base form and inherit the styles, not just copy them from one form to the other. We'll talk about that later on in the course. Okay, um, so here's your main form. And then you're going to go to your next form. This is the flow that I want. I'm visualizing here. Now I need my last form or my final form. Let's call it final form. So, again, I'll go to project. I'll go add uh, <clears throat> Windows form. And, again, I'll call this last form just to make it nice and quick. Um, here's last form. <clears throat> I got a couple of controls that are the same, right? I got one control, actually, for sure, from next form. I got the next button. Um, but I don't, I don't need that because it's the last form. I need, but I got the back button, which is what I want, right? So I'll kind of highlight the back button, copy it, and put it on my last form here. Here it is. And I'll put it with my little guide down here. I also put another button in here really quickly that I'm going to call exit button, right? Because you want to exit from the bloody application at some point. Exit. Um, and call this an appropriate exit button. Exit button. Okay, here we go. Exit button, you get your back button. The last forms to really display the information you got going on in your first two forms, right? So, I'm a lazy guy, right? So I got to figure it out. One thing I'd probably want to put in together is some kind of container, right? So I, I really like the group box as a simple container. You can use other containers as well. So I, I'll dra uh, kind of drag in a, a group box. I'll show you why in a second. And let's call this... Um, I don't know, personal info, personal info group box, long name, but I know what it is, right? And maybe on the, on the actual uh, text itself, I'll kind of put in personal info, right? That's what I want to kind of carry forward to this group box. Now, if I do everything correctly, I'm going to need a little bit more space in my group box. I'm going to have to make it a little bit larger. There it is. And it's kind of, I'm using my custom guides, my automatic guides here to make that work, right? Oops. There we go. Got my group box. All right. And now, 
I already have on my main form my age, right? So um, I could probably grab this uh, control. Uh, I don't have my label. I need a couple labels. So probably what, I, what I'm going to do first, because my labels are all going to change, the names of them are going to change, but these ones stay the same. Maybe my, my age label is the same. I just need to change my text, right? So I'll just grab, it, grab this and the styling, because it already has the kind of uh, fonts and everything that I want, right? Go back to my last form here, click inside the, the, uh, the group box, and control V for paste. And I'll move this around where I want it. Now, I don't want to enter my age anymore, right? I already know what my, my age is eventually, right? So I'm going to just style this form around. I'm going to change this enter my age here to uh, age, my age maybe. My, if I can type my age, here's my age, right? And I'm going to kind of put this over here, right? The names, of the, form, the names of the controls are okay, right? They are. They're okay because uh, the great thing is that, again, they make sense, right? So age text box and my age label, age label, they're fine, right? They're, even though they're a different form. Okay, so if I go to next form, I'm going to grab this, but I realized something right away. I realized that my first name and last name might be too short for everybody, right? Because we want to be inclusive in our society, right? Uh, my name is pretty darn long, too. It's Heliopolis. 12 letters, right? So I know that I'm probably going to have to make the size of my, uh, my, uh, of my box a little bit bigger than that. So right now the size is 100 by 23, right? So here it is. And I want to change both of them. So if I highlight both, again, it gives me the common controls for both, common pro pro uh, properties for both. I want to change my width to about 130, I'm, I'm guessing. And again, you'd have to check this out to, me, to be sure, right? And now, if I did that, I'm probably going to have to move things around, maybe center it again. But now I've got kind of like this, right? Again, I can copy this, and I go back to my last form, and here I am. I'm going to go click on my, my group box. I'm thinking I probably need more room, and I'm pasting it in there, right? I'll move these around, these form, these uh, controls here. And again, instead of just saying uh, uh, for my first name, it's really my first name, my last name, right? So I'm going to change that. But the control names themselves are fine. So here's my first name. We're going to do some other modifications in a second. And here's my last name. A couple other things i got to do just to clean up. Again, we're GUI building right now, right? More than anything else. Here's my first name, my last name. I'll move these controls in place as well, right? Here we are. And I noticed that there's kind of a, a difference here. I want to restyle this. My age kind of be the same, so let's put this the same. And maybe what I want to do is line these three things up so that they're all the same. So, um, you know, I'll put my age so it's approximately like the other ones. That looks about right. Also, it's kind of shorter, and even though I, only, I don't need that many digits, like, you know, I, I mean, my, my age isn't going to be 10,000 years old, right? I could make it sm smaller, right? Or I could make it the same size. It's really a style choice. In this particular case, I'm just going to make it the same size to make them all seem the same. Okay, there it is. So now my age, my first name, my last name, they're all there. I've got all, my, all the GUI components I need, uh, pretty much. I recommend to you that you even plan your menus. I think I want to have a menu on my last page. So let's drag and drop a menu um, option as well. Here's my menu and toolbar. I'm going to uh, double click on the menu strip add it in. If you notice, it kind of adds it into my, um, let me just, uh, actually, I don't want it there. <laughs> Get rid of it. Down with toolbars. Hold on. Uh, delete. Let's try that again. I'm going to highlight the form, and I will drag the menu strip above it. There we go. And in my menu strip, I'm probably going to, again, I'm designing my GUI. I want a file menu for sure, right? So I want to put that in there. And I probably want a help menu because I know what I want in my form, right? I want an about box, right? So here's my, my help menu. In my file menu, I'm probably going to have a print option, right? So if I'm going to do a print, I'm probably going to go uh, and P for print to make that shortcut, right? And the uh, exit, E and then ampersand exit, right? Here's my exit. And I'm probably going to have under my help, I'm probably going to put an about box. So I'm going to probably put in about, right? So those are my, I kind of styled and created my, uh, my menu right here. So my menu is ready to go. So I've kind of put together uh, most of the components that I want back and forth. Okay, do you see why I've, did you see the logic behind this? 
I've, I've, right now, I'm showing you how to create an app, and my way of doing it, again, you might have a, your way of doing it, your might work, way work well, but you've got to create a process or a workflow for yourself. If you don't, and if you kind of do it haphazardly as you go, right, then what ends up happening is you get lost and you have to go back and redo stuff, and it causes rework, which companies hate because it co rework costs you money because they've got to pay you again for those hours you already worked, right? Rework is that. Save everything. That's really important. <clears throat> Um, uh, the other thing that I, that I would recommend to you is, I know we're kind of dropping things down here, but if I know I've got a file, a print menu, I'm kind of probably going to use some print controls. And right now, uh, to this point, we're going to learn about printing more, more, uh, uh, more clearly today. But I want to kind of have this, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, under, uh, instead of under printing, I'll use that VB Visual Basic kind of quick tools here, this print form. I'll probably drag that into as a component as well because I know I'm going to print. Right? Okay. 